Dev Meditations welcome back to finally another video. As many of you might have noticed already, I'm currently in a so-called, so professional scientists like to call this Dotson-like hibernation state. This is the state when your channel is basically just like Andrew Dotson's channel, kind of inactive, but from time to time he's posting his very first meme review ever. I'm not posting meme reviews here at the moment, but I post a video from time to time. And if you were wondering what was going on with me or what's going on with me, I just have this very huge side project going on right now, um, which just takes all of my time. Okay, it, it, it takes 12 hours per day um, next to teaching at my school, etc. And, and it's just terrible. But this one right here is, is kind of not. Not parallel to the crown. Never mind. Um, but overall, um, I'm nearly done with my side project or the preparations, and I'm going to present my big side project to you, start of June, somewhat. And from there on onwards, I probably will post more videos once again. So stay tuned for that. And other than that, what you might have noticed from the title of this video, I've been teaching at school, at the private school, for over a year by now basically one year at this point and I want to tell you how it has been up until this point, how teaching actually works during the pandemic and stuff like this. And I hope you are going to enjoy the video and now let's dive right in. A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. As always, just a tiny little bit of background information. I'm teaching in a school here in Saxony-Anhalt in Germany. It's a private school with about 250 students and about 30 teachers teaching there and I'm teaching mathematics and physics on a nearly full-time basis. Meaning I'm being employed for 36 hours per week at the private school. Teaching mathematics and physics from grade 6 to grade 9. This is what I'm doing currently. And don't forget that I also have stemmage running. And in normal case, I do two YouTube channels if I'm not um, all taken by my big side project. And I'm also doing the side project at the moment and a bunch of other stuff, private tutoring and the like. And, and, and that's so much work, so much work. But we are talking about school today. So let's do all of this chronologically. Starting in May last year, I wasn't teaching mathematics and physics exactly at the school. For the last part of the last um, half a year of, of school, up until the summer holidays, I was teaching in the so-called Wahlpflicht course, which was just basically a substitute for people who didn't want to take French at school. And yeah, I understand why you wouldn't take that ugly language at, at school as a module. It's, it really sucks, but yeah. There were a few students there, uh, 7th, 8th and 9th grade and I was teaching them basic mathematics a tiny little bit but most of the time we were just playing some shitty scribble IO or something. I don't know. It wasn't really too much I had to do there and this was going on for about, let me think, I think three months. No, two, two and a half months. And at that point I was teaching for about 10 hours per week at the Swalpflicht course and also it, um, everything worked in the so-called Wechsel model in a, in a shift model you could say. So half of the, of the class, for, for example ninth grade, half of the class was coming there on the A week and the other half was coming to school on the B week. So they are changing um, from, from time to time each and every week just permutations basically and yeah this is how it worked and they tried to prevent corona from spreading that way. And then there were summer holidays and at the end of the summer holidays a new year started and this is where I started teaching mathematics and physics basically full-time at my school. And here is what I was teaching from this point onwards. So in sixth grade I was teaching mathematics and physics. Mathematics included um, elementary number theory, meaning the de divisor theory and the like, prime numbers, prime factorizations and so on. Then there were rational numbers and after the rational numbers we also had now at this point triangles, symmetries and angles. And in physics we were talking about uh, mo movements, so, so basic laws of movements at constant speeds basically and also we were talking about temperatures and 
and heat in general, so a little bit of thermodynamics. And at the start we were talking about shadows and optics and just stuff like this. So, so nothing really special, I mean it's, it's sixth grade. Then in seventh grade I was teaching mathematics in the so-called Leistungs course. This is, the, this is basically the, the, the course for the very good students in mathematics. And we were covering stuff like um, rational numbers yet again. And rational numbers, I was including some group theories, so I was talking about identities and the like, trying to put a tiny little bit of higher mathematics into seventh grade, just a tiny little notch, okay, not, not too much. And after rational numbers, we were talking about coordinate systems and then symmetry is too. And now we are at rectangles, we're talking about percentages and all this stuff. So the basic stuff you do in seventh grade. And also I am teaching um, at the moment due to a change in, in the curriculum. Um, I am teaching in eighth grade, in both classes in eighth grade and the same seventh grade I was teaching in mathematics, also physics. And they were all having the same stuff just due to a little change in the school internal curriculum. And I am teaching there currently forces, energy, power and all those basic classical mechanical um, things. Apart from, um, so, so what we are not in including is acceleration and like. And then we also have the ninth grade and there I am teaching currently waves and ionizing radiation and we're also talking about in induction, not the principle of mathematical induction, we're talking about the, the physical kind of induction, yuck, <laughs> yikes, that sucks and a tiny little bit of other stuff. So Newton's laws um, and also F equals to M times A, so in, including the laws of acceleration in their constant acceleration and the like. And this is basically what I was covering for this whole year up until this point. But you might ask yourself, how did it now work out with all the corona going on? At the start of the year, it was actually pretty normal what we did. What we did is we were just putting all the students that we had in the class normally into school. So it was just regular school going on. There was nothing special about it. It was actually pretty fine. The only thing that really sucked is that I had to use a smart board most of the time in physics, for example. In, in, instead of a chalkboard, I, I fucking hate those, those smart boards. And bunch of other things that I really didn't like, but this just has to do with, with minor things, in, in, including children. I don't like children, so this could be um, a minor point in, in why I don't like teaching um, very much, at least at school. <laughs> but other than that, it was really, really normal. Nothing much going on. But then, after summer was over, autumn started, and in October, and starting onwards to, um, to the winter holidays and the like, it really escalated here in Germany with the corona pandemic and it started getting wet. <laughs> My boys are oh, so, so wild. So we started teaching completely remotely and this really sucked. I didn't want to stream some, some, kind, of, um, some, some kind of lesson. I didn't want to do that. So this is why I was only putting like exercises into our SVP. This is like the homework platform you could say. Yeah, this is where I was putting all the homework in and what the students had to do. And this was going on from the start of de December, end of November up until mid of February, I suppose. This was such a long period of time where we had to do remote teaching and it really sucked. It really seriously sucked. I didn't know how to uh, approach remote teaching properly and I believe for no teacher in my school, at my school, it, it, it really worked out. It was just absolutely terrible and it was a fucking waste of time. So remote teaching seriously sucks and it has no benefit whatsoever. So re remote teaching is not good. Um, it can be good if you stream your lessons, but if you don't stream your lessons, it's just completely pointless. So, so yeah, it was kind of a pointless three, peer, uh, three, three month period for um, for my students, kind of, in, in my courses. But then we started going back to school in the Wechsel model yet again, in, in the switching model, um, a model, start of, yeah, no, no, mid of February. And yeah, now what I'm doing is basically some kind of hybrid teaching. Um, how should I ex explain it? So 
Once again, we have the A and the B week. Half of the class is coming in the A week and the other half is staying at home. And then at the B week, the other half is coming and, and the half that stayed before is, is, is going to stay at, at home. And after this big break where we had remote teaching, we implemented a platform. It's called Big Blue Button, which sucks absolute dick. I, I hate this thing, but this is what I'm using right now because all the students have access to it. And what I can do is stream. And what I'm basically doing is I take my whole setup with me. I have my Asus um, ZenBook Pro Duo with me and then I also have my Surface Pro with me and then basically what I'm doing is stream my lessons and I'm going to project via a stream what I'm doing on my Surface Pro writing onto the smart board or the beamer such that the students can see what I'm doing inside of the classroom and at the same time the other people which, which are at home can follow what I'm doing and it seriously sucks. It's a lot of building up the internet connection is absolutely terrible it fails all the fucking time and uh, it's just absolutely terrible overall I, I I hate it I hate teaching like this and I want to go back to regular teaching I mean teaching in and of itself at a regular school with children already sucks really hard it's it's no fun whatsoever nearly no one has interest in what you are talking about and I want to stop teaching at the school as fast as possible but for the time being, if I'm teaching there, I want to do it properly and not via remote teaching or hybrid teaching or the like. And this is what I was basically experiencing. I mean, one third of the year was okay, where I was able to really teach at the school and the other two thirds of the year absolutely sucked because of Corona most of the time. Not only because of the children, but mostly because of Corona. And it's just absolutely terrible. I want to stop teaching that way. And I believe you probably, so if you are still into remote teaching and the like, and you need to listen to your lecturer at university, you probably experience the same thing. That it's kind of worthless um, at the moment to try to learn something. But there are sources out there which can help you learn something new each and every day. For example, our today's sponsor Brilliant will kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. This right here is a Newton's pendulum. And it absolutely has nothing to do with the sponsored message, but I thought like showing it to you just because it's pretty cool and it has a little mirror at the bottom. But, but actually, if I think about it, it has something to do with Brilliant, with our today's sponsor. Because, you know, Brilliant is your source for the best online learning courses that you can find somewhere here on the internet. I mean, at least in my opinion. And this right here, Newton's pendulum, has something to do with the conservation of momentum. This is a part of physics and classical mechanics, which is really important and dictates a lot of laws in physics overall. And thing is, you can learn something about that over on Brilliant. You want to learn something about mathematics. Maybe I sparked your interest in elementary number theory and rational numbers. Well, go over to Brilliant, check out their courses on elementary number theory or just fractions in general. And you are probably going to get a kick out of it because they are going to give you a very sweet time with their highly interactive courses with their interactive learning experience overall where you can track stuff around. You can move crafts around. You can just see visually what you are doing right now. Even if you add fractions, they probably have some pie charts going on over there where you can vary the parts that you are going to have inside of this pie, which is going to give you a better understanding of simple fractions. No matter what it is you want to learn, Brilliant definitely has something up their sleeve for you and you should definitely try it out. And if this feels like it's something for you, definitely make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, brilliant.org slash flamblemaths, because with it you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already. But more importantly, the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription. And this is a really great deal if you ask me, because they are adding new content, new courses each and every month on their website. They are brushing up on all the courses to make them even better than they are already. And it's definitely worth your buck. Definitely, you're going to get so much content out of it, you're literally never going to run out of content on the website, which is absolutely amazing. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. If you did enjoy this little video during the week, then definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel and to share the video around, give this video a like and also comment on the video. And other than that, I'm wishing you guys um, a chaos double pendulum that you can find on stemmerch.com day. Ciao.